uh, everybody, ladies and gentlemen, welcome uh, to the BBX Lunch and Learn. Today's uh, topic is charitable donations. And so what we're trying to do today is to uh, have a discussion on how you as a business owner can create a, a budget that you didn't have perhaps uh, previously in order to help charities out. We've also got some uh, charity uh owners, as if that's the right term, on this call today to share some of the experience that they've had by using the BBX uh, platform. And, um, and so to give you some practical tips that you can take away, some knowledge, but also some practical tips if you run a charity or you'd like to contribute and participate in a charitable cause of some kind, but budget is, uh, is the issue that you're facing right now. So I'm John Attridge. I'm uh, the CEO and founder of BBX here in the UK. BBX is a digital trade credit platform that turns otherwise wasting spare capacity into held value in the form of a digital trade credit. And then we use that to help charities. And I'll explain how that uh, works uh, as, uh, as we go along. So just as a quick understanding of, uh, so I, we can judge the audience that we've got on the, uh, the event today. Who, just by a raise of hand, is familiar with the BBX concept, either as a customer or some way to do with it? You understand what BBX does. So we've got just about everybody understands the concept. So I won't bore you with that. Who on the, on the call here actually runs a charity or is part of a board of trustees or has some connection with, with a charity? Brian, Peter? There's him or not. And... Ellie, yes. by the look of it, uh, excellent. And I guess the other people are interested parties that either own a business or what have you. So let's begin with uh, how the, uh, the money is created in the first place. And then I can bring in uh, uh, Peter and Brian uh, to share some experiences on how they've actually used it in practice running a charity. I can also give you some case studies uh, of what we've done over the last 32 years that we've been working in this field. So one of the big uh, issues uh, after COVID and, and even perhaps before was that many charities were uh, struggling to find funding to keep operating because of uh, government cutbacks and uh, a number of other things there, the ability for uh, people to donate at the same level. And therefore what happened was that a lot of the services that the charity would like to provide have dropped off. Is this ringing any bells with uh, the people on the call? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then when we went to the general public to donate, and the general public are usually fantastic. I'm sure you've all seen various appeals that have been uh, performed over time. And, you know, there's, you know, Captain Tom went and raised whatever it was, uh, millions, multi, multi, multi millions. So when the right cause was there and then the right conduit was available, you know, people did, uh, dig deep into their pockets and and help charities out. And I think sometimes charities re uh, uh, rely on government funding to a degree. And while that's always helpful, some charities don't qualify. And all of a sudden, what happens when the government decides to tighten their belt? So, you know, that does create issues. So what we're trying to do is with BBX is to find some additional funding that's running around in every day, it's hidden in plain sight in every person's business where we can capture and monetize spare capacity. So for the example today, uh, for the BBX customers on the, on the call, you can donate BBX money directly into a charity account. So you might nominate one of the charities that's on BBX that accepts BBX digital trade credits, and you can make a payment directly from your BBX account straight into the charity's account. We also have a thing called Spare Timber, which is our annual fundraising where people who own a business can donate their digital trade credits into a pot. And we then distribute uh, the proceeds of that campaign, which takes place through the entirety of September. And, um, and we uh, gained last year, I think it was about 280,000 pounds from various sources that were uh, in there, and then we distributed amongst the charities that were participating in uh, in the exercise. So uh, it, all the charities benefited. 
for the couple of people that are not part of BBX, a digital trade credit is earned by selling what was former spare capacity in your business. So I always use the example of a hotel. It's got 100 rooms. It's got, selling the rooms for 100 pounds a night and it's got a 50% occupancy. That tells me it's running a good business. It's making 5,000 pounds a night in additional business over and above what it currently would. But it's also got 50 rooms uh, or an asset that's going to waste. When you wake up tomorrow morning, if you don't sell that room, then you've still got your infrastructure costs. The receptionist still gets paid. The chef's still on duty. The rates are paid. Every other aspect of uh, running the hotel is still there. But we've got an empty room that's gone to waste. So what if? we could absolutely uh, promote that room out into a community of business people that are all part of BBX. Someone from BBX comes and stays and they turn, and when they check out in the morning, they take 100 BBX pounds out of their account and put it into the hotel owner's account. The hotel owner has now turned an empty bedroom into someone that's now staying in the hotel. And so from a marketing perspective, they can, uh, 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 someone staying who likes to stay can tell their friends and that might lead to pound sterling business and that person's not staying in a competitor's hotel. The other thing with the hotel owner to earn that uh, currency other than my fee is a bar of soap, a squirt of shampoo and egg and bacon for breakfast because none of the fixed costs have changed. So now the hotel owner has 100 digital trade credits in their account that they may choose because of their philosophy as a company to donate that to a charitable cause. So they're now donating 100 digital trade credits into a given charity or into a pot in spare timber uh, that only cost them maybe a fiver or 10 quid to earn for the bacon and egg and, and, uh, and soap and, and shampoo, if that all makes sense to everybody. So I'm sorry for boring the BBX people on the, uh, on the call, but it just uh, helps explain to people that aren't familiar with our particular product. So we've been working with this and now for, as I say, 32 years. And I've got actually some of the people that have benefited by running their charities and using the BBX method in order to uh, gain more funds for their charity. And the first person I'd like to call on is Peter Rufus from the Helpful Hounds Assistance uh, Dogs Charity. Peter, welcome to the call today. Yeah, Can you just, you just share some of the actual practical experiences of using our formula to help your charity. Mm, yeah. Well, it, it was, I have to say it was something to me that looked like a no brainer when it was first introduced because this concept of charity angels um, seemed to make sense because as a charity, we ourselves don't actually have a product to sell. We don't run shops or anything, but we do have services we are providing to other people who are disadvantaged, whether they're dealing with uh, autism, Down syndrome, physical disablement, or whatever by training our assistant dogs. So um, if you look at our charity, there are basically three things we have to do. And they're the three things that actually need finance or financial support in order to, um, uh, to make us survive. And as, as uh, you know, John was saying, it, it's not been the easiest thing over the last 18 months, but uh, there have been avenues. We've had to learn new things and do different things and BBX is one of them. But we're looking really to support our families that are dealing with autism and the schools that have special needs students. We're looking at the welfare of our dogs. They are the like the heart, the core of the charity that we're running. Um, then in addition to that, uh, we've got to um, run the charity, which requires all the administration, the marketing, uh, the promotion and so forth. And we normally say to people, if they are donating money to us, and I'm talking about you know, pound sterling at the moment, you know, everything goes into the heart of our charity. Because most of us are volunteers. Uh, we only pay our, our dog trainers who are specialist assistant dog trainers. So therefore, if we're doing that, then you know, the conundrum is, how do we pay for our banners, our uh, gazebos, and all the things we need in order to promote Health for Hounds so A, more people hear about us and B, more people come to us for help. And that's really where I saw BBX helping uh, because, you know, first of all, um, our website was set up three or four years ago uh, when we were just starting out. And the way we work now is totally different to the way we work then. 
Um, so um, it was a situation where somebody from BBX could actually come in and build our website. I think they came to about 3,400 BBX pounds. Next question is, how do we fund that? Because we're not selling anything. Um, and of course, that's really where the national account managers stepped in on our behalf. Uh, they took time to understand what we do and why we do it and what are the benefits of us doing it. And they actually, on our behalf, spoke to various uh, businesses within the uh, BBX framework and they raised the BBX pounds that would help us do that. Now, this still has to go through our accountant, but it's it's a totally different fundraising uh, situation to what we have in the outside world. Uh, similarly, um, we I took on a new admin, or we're calling her the relationship manager, who would deal with all the new applicants, but she needed uh, one of our laptops so she could access our cloud-based um, system. And uh, so uh, through that, we raised 450 pounds of BBX pounds, um, PCs made simple, supplied uh, the computer or the laptop. And again, as John was saying, this was from their downside. It was something they'd had for sale for, you know, X months. And if it's not for sale, if it's not sold within that period, they will put it on to BBX uh, to, to move it on, which is precisely what happened. And then thirdly, and I'm just talking the last couple of months, this, is, this has all happened. And the third thing that's happened for us is um, our, uh, our account manager came to me and said, look, there's a, there's a show going on in, um, in Southbourne. It's the Shake and Stir show. There's going to be 34,000 people there. It's a great opportunity, uh, bearing in mind it's only sort of three, mile, three, four miles from where your, your base is, to show Helpful Hounds to all those people. Uh, so he said, why not sponsor the, um, the bar? Um, as well as, and of course, that entitled us to banners all over the place and uh, our gazebo there. And uh, yeah, we run a separate fundraising element as well. And so we spent two days at the Shake and Stir exhibition. And, um, you know, basically that was very successful for us. We had a number of people come up. I've got some dudes now saying they might be able to help us with a van. Um, and it went very well. But if somebody had come to me and said, you know, why not sponsor the bar at the Shake and Stir? I'd have said, there's no way I can justify um, the money. We, you know, we just got a thousand pounds from Barrett's. I couldn't tell Barrett's, we've just sponsored the bar to go to a show. Whereas using this, it actually worked well. And of course we've got more than a thousand pounds worth of return. Uh, if you look at the money we collected, if you look at the things that have been promised, the contacts we've made. So all in all, that's taking the BBX pounds and turning it into the real life um, experience of developing a charity. Now, John, I've just babbled on there for about, I don't know how long, it's a bit of a monologue. monologue. Does that does that all make sense, folks? That, that, it's just help? from the heart, uh, Peter. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's, it was, certainly, that, yeah. That, that's, we, we want real experiences on this call. So mm. uh, now there's a couple of other people that run charities like Peter. Uh, Brian, I think you're one of those. Brian Morrison, are you with us? Yeah, hi. So, Brian, can you just give us a, a brief overview of what you've used it for, if there's some different aspects, perhaps, than okay, what Peter... Well, I, I'm... Uh, yeah, sure. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I'm at the other end uh, where Peter is. I've, uh, I'm completely brand new in, as, a, as an angel, so not actually did anything with it as yet. And But the, the idea is, as Peter was mentioning, we're, we're looking exactly for exactly pieces of work that we need done to move forward. For instance, the website, uh, accommodation places to run retreats for our clients, marketing banners, Peter mentioned gazebos, it's all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff where, again, we don't have the funds and cash to do it, but it was just an amazing opportunity when we heard that BBX does it because when I joined BBX to business, we already were giving away 50% of our profits to this uh, social enterprise and charity. But we didn't realize that not everyone out there would want to become a member of a, a client of ours 
but there was another way they could actually donate and still support the charity. So I'm, I've not got any experience yet, brand new in it, but really excited to start getting out there and getting seen amongst the members. Thanks, Brian. And was there one other person that I've forgotten here that runs a charity? Yeah. Is it uh, that that's part of BBX? And Andrew's waving a hand down there. So let me just unmute you if I can. Hi. There we go. Okay, so my experience with the BBX has been amazing. Uh, for me, it was a no-brainer. Um, as soon as I was uh, talking to somebody, it was around about three years ago, so it's been three years now. Um, for me, it was, let's do this. I'm one of these people that thinks outside the box. So a little bit about the charity. Charity is called Food for All. We've been in operation now for six years. Every single person that's in the organization is doing everything on a voluntary basis. As a CEO, I've never paid myself. Every single penny goes back into the charity. If I need anything for admin or I need a website done or I need um, some promotional work done, that is all done on a voluntary basis. So when BBX came into our life, and sorry, Food for All actually um, feed uh, homeless and low income families and individuals across East London and parts of Essex. So when COVID hit, um, we used to do two, two days a week. COVID hit and me and my husband, who is also the COO of the organization, decided we're opening the kitchen five days a week. We're gonna support as many people as we can. Um, what happened with that is we ended up doing around about 2000 meals a week throughout the whole of COVID. We are still open, we're still doing two, um, two days, and now we're doing around about 1,200. So when I came on board, there was quite a few things that I wanted to do and I wanted to think about. And also what's happened right now is um, in, in June, I actually got a Queen's Award. So I've got the British Empire Medal for all the work that I've done. And with BBX, I was speaking to the account manager when COVID hit in, uh, very early um, and he was saying to me Andrew what do you need I said look what we need is clothes or we need um, um, food and that they couldn't really help in that sense so what they did do was there's a company called Skinny Snacks um, they put we basically worked together and we put something out there to the community and we raised about ten thousand pounds and what happened was I ended up with uh, five pallets of um, Skinny Snacks and the founder of Skinny Snacks also gave us a free pallet, which was amazing. Um, then I was just looking at what I needed to do for the charity, especially now that we're now moving into a more mainstream um, because of the awards that I've been getting and because of the Queen's Award has just been beautiful. Um, I contacted somebody called the Awards People um, Rachel runs the awards people amazing she's really amazing she's basically putting us forward and writing award bids for us but what she's also doing is sharing that with me so then I can use that later on to go for any other awards or the trustees can do that and then last of all we've got something called the brand bucket now I love Barnaby Barnaby's from the brand bucket um, he he was basically every so often he supports a charity. He gives a charity rate to help with the marketing plan. Um, I had a long chat with Barnaby and Barnaby wasn't really thinking about doing it this year, but I kind of persuaded him and we are now working together. Um, and Barnaby from the Brand Bucket is, um, he's done quite a lot of uh, campaigns for big mainstream charities, uh, which were cancer uh, and the daffodil um, campaign. So I'm really excited we're a part of uh, working with him. Um, if I think about resistance, I've had no resistance um, in terms of donations. People have been amazing. There was at one point where I needed a screen, a computer screen, and somebody reached out to me and said, look, I can give this to you for free. Um, I have a, I'm not going to give it via BBX, but it was a BBX connection. He said, just come and pick it up. Um, and also I've had some support in terms of content writing. And what I can see now is it just makes sense to be with the BBX. Uh, our trustees love the concept of the BBX. And me on a personal level, I just think it's amazing. And it's opened up so many doors for us as a charity. 
so I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it there. Otherwise, I'm gonna go on and on and on about it. <laughs> thanks, uh, thanks, Andrew. So uh, mm. fantastic. Thanks. For yeah. Uh, could I just add one thing, actually, John? Because what Andrew brought up there, I think, is very relevant. We also have had quite a lot of free advice from BBX members. You know, I've had an hour, an hour and a half here, uh, just talking over different issues of um, you know strategy, marketing, and so forth. And it's been so valuable. And in fact, it it actually helped set the scene for our website so yeah that's an almost intangible it doesn't show up in bbx pounds because it's yep. free of free and you know welcome advice thanks peter yes all right so uh, have i forgotten anybody that runs a charity that wanted to offer anything i think there was three no cool so there's there's two aspects of it. it's our ongoing commitment to the charities that that allows people to directly donate bbx pounds to a given charity like the the people have uh, explained there's another opportunity which is outside our community so you may know of a person that owns a hotel in norfolk who's nothing to do with bbx but they've got a piano that no one ever plays they could sell that into the bbx community and let's say it went for a thousand pounds for the sake of the math, then that could go into the spare timber pot. And in turn, all the participating charities that uh, play with spare timber uh, could then benefit equally uh, by the, uh, the distribution of the pot, if that makes uh, sense to everybody. So uh, there's more than one way. It's, uh, and that could be take the time of a piano. It could be a set of golf clubs. It might be uh, a voucher that you've that you've been you've got hold of some hour and you'd never used it could be you know a weekend away of some kind in a in a property that you own that's not otherwise uh, occupied the whole idea is to capture and monetize something that was going to go to waste um, and of uh, you know we talk about amazon if everybody saw on the news last week our amazon are now being uh, shamed into uh, trying to return some of the wastage that they're just putting into landfill. So imagine if someone like Amazon, if anybody's got a contact with the person that runs that side of Amazon, I'd love to talk to them. So instead of putting it into landfill, we sell that into the BBX community, get some BBX pounds and, and pop it into the charity's uh, uh, coffer. That would be a wonderful thing. Let me just share you a couple of quick uh, examples of other uh, uh, things that we've done over the time, and then I'll open it up uh, for anybody that wants to ask questions or whatnot. In the meantime, if you want to put details in and connect up with you, because you're going to be with like-minded uh, people on this call, uh, feel free to drop your LinkedIn into the chat if you wish to, and uh, feel free to connect up with you so that, uh, that you can get some useful connections. So the first one I'm going to talk about is a few years ago, uh, we were working with uh, the Dorset Blind. And the Dorset Blind look after, I don't know, 20, 30,000 visually impaired people in Dorset, oddly enough. So they were involved with a thing called the Big Give. Is everybody familiar with the Big Give? Is right. If you're not, just Google it, the Big Give. Periodically, uh, it's an organisation that provides matched funding for charities in a fundraising uh, uh, mode. So they'll set a target. And uh, I think from memory, the target was uh, 20,000 pounds that the Dorset Blind had to raise by a certain period of time. And if they did that, then the Big Give would give them 20,000 sterling as a match to funding. Okay, that's the concept, pretty simple. So we got a distress call from them about a week out from the deadline of this saying, we've raised 16,000, but you know, if we can't get the rest, we're not going to even going to get the match funding. So our account managers went to work. We raised another, uh, the 4,000 shortfall through BBX contributions, which count one for one through your books. Uh, so in terms for the big give, they also counted as a fundraising. We hit the magic 20,000 uh, targets. So not only did the, the, uh, the charity get the extra 4,000 BBX money to spend, but they got 20,000 uh, pound sterling because it kicked in the big give matched funding initiative so does that make sense and if you haven't uh you know that was a great example of of what we did so if you're not familiar with that please google it and look it up if uh, after the call if you can't find it let me know and i'll show you where that is uh they don't operate all the time uh, i'm not quite sure what the criteria is but that was just one example the um the next example is with diverse abilities again it's a local uh, charity and they help uh, uh, 
people with all forms of learning difficulties from very young children right up to, I guess, if you're hundred years old. Um, and they were, they were uh, uh, this was about four years ago, uh, they were doing a big charity ball at the lighthouse in Poole. So they'd paid for the venue, they'd paid for the MC, they'd paid for the security, they'd paid for the marketing, all the costs of running this event were in place. But they, again, they got two or three weeks out from the event. This could hold thousands of people. They had five tables of 10 that hadn't been sold. So that represents two issues. One is I've got a hole in the venue. In other words, where there's no one sitting in a seat, that doesn't look good. Uh, or I can make the dance floor bigger or something, which doesn't get me any revenue. But so they instead, they came to us uh, and we got to work. We sold the five tables at 1,000 BBX pounds a table for 10 people to attend. That got the extra 50 people instead of empty chairs and five tables that are, were vacant in the venue. So it makes it look better. And they got 5,000 BBX pounds. Now, they went to Paul Sandy, who runs Saren Jewelers, Christchurch Jewelers, uh, uh, Arcade Jewelers, and he's got a whole lot of jewelry shops, who's a customer of BBX. They bought a 5,000 pound diamond ring with the 5,000 pounds they got from the five tables of, of 10 that they sold that was going to be a hole. And then they raffled the ring on the night and raised, I think the number was about 12 and a half thousand pounds in sterling. So as a direct result of uh, uh, doing that, they've turned a hole into 12 and a half thousand pounds with much needed revenue uh, to help run the charity with whatever format that they choose. The other thing that we uh, help with for charity people is uh, payment to volunteers. So many of you who run a charity have volunteers. Now, sometimes there might only be a few, sometimes it might be you know, a whole lot. Here's a way of re rewarding volunteers with, you know, you might give every volunteer that helped out in your charity this year a weekend away as a thank you. Now, you buy the weekend away, by using your BBX pounds with a BBX customer and you give your volunteer something uh, from the chat, from the money that you've raised. So there's just a few ideas from, uh, from people of uh, what we have done, what we continue to do, um, and just some different ways of helping a charity find the money that they're looking for, enabling a business that would like to support a charity to find the revenue that they have down the back of their business sofa. I do another presentation on how to find 20 grand down the back of your business sofa. And that's the spare capacity that you have in your business. And whether that's uh, a set of golf clubs or whether that's uh, something physical or maybe a lawyer and you've got an hour's time that you haven't sold, or there's a whole different varieties where you can uh, look in your own business to see what revenue opportunity exists that you currently haven't fully sold. Talk to me about how we can monetize that. Uh, you can pay directly with BBX pounds if you're a BBX customer, or you can use uh, via voucher system that we can sell into the system to create BBX money if you're not. So that's pretty much what I wanted to cover today for everybody. Um, I'd now like to open up the floor. If anybody's got any questions or any uh, suggestions or wants to know more about anything, if you can just unmute yourself and let, uh, let us all know. Um, and if there's anybody there that wants to throw anything in, um, if there's not, then I, I wish you well with the, your, the rest of your lunch hour today. Uh, it's been my pleasure to have you on board. Uh, please feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn um, and, um, and we will finish up there. regarding CICs rather than charities then? So, so a CIC can uh, can participate, Ellie. Uh, it's just a slightly different format than our charities thing. So please uh, connect up with me later. Or whereabouts are you, Ellie? Uh, I'm in Cornwall, mid Cornwall. Okay, John Yacomino is uh, yeah. is our guy on the ground. If you know John, please touch I've base. I've got a meeting booked with him in a little Bra while, actually. Brilliant. Okay, yeah, he this can afternoon, Ellie. <laughs> he can fill you there, Peter. Hello. Hey John, hi everybody. Um, what's the CIC? Community Interest Company. Okay. So I'm allowed to pay myself a wage and I'm allowed to charge for my services, whereas charities aren't. Um, so 
the way I'm going to work is I'm setting up an affordable fresh food alliance so people will still be buying from me their food like they would at the supermarket but whereas charities have to give their food away they can't keep doing that forever it's not going to be sustainable for for long term yeah that's where I want to step in and and make it a long-term goal it's similar to uh what I do I if I was a friend to charity, which we are setting up, we would give away our services. But as a CIC, I can sell these services to the local NHS or council and then put that money all back in. So it allows us to sell. So it, it does work. OK, yeah. so we can cover the uh, individualness. I just wanted to get the whole concept across. Now, we've got a couple of other people that will want, would like an interview and a promotion of their charity, uh, Nigel. Well, if you were one of those, if if you'd like to unmute yourself and and uh, in fact I can. Do that Hi. Later. Sorry, I I, I didn't realise. So uh, can no, you no, 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 I, I, no. No, no, no. A lack of communication, I think, at some point. I, I'm not going to charity. I was asked to come and talk about how we have donated to a charity over the uh, uh, over the last few years. Ah, oh, brilliant. Let's uh, let's share that. Thank you. So, okay, cool. So, uh, first thing, I must apologise for any background noise. Um, our, our dear friends have decided that today is a good day to put scaffolding outside my office. So, uh, if you can hear any construction noises, uh, I do apologise. Uh, nothing I can do about that. Uh, we've been using BBX for things about four or five years now. Um, and do all the normal things you would expect. Um, just managed to actually book a hotel room for the uh, first time in about two years, which is wonderful uh, to get back to, to it, the proper use of BBX. Um, but the reason to talk today is, is uh, about our support for, for YMCA Exeter. Um, we've donated and supported a number of charities in the, in the real world over the, over the years. But over the last few years, we've always liked to work with one particular charity we, we we support a number of others but particularly as a, a digital marketing agency we get asked no end uh to help charities and there are so many worthy causes that you could just go completely broke just yeah doing that so you have to draw the line somewhere so um ymca has been a great way of being involved with the local charity um the the younger uh, supporting younger people back into to life and work has, has been something that uh, we've looked at through many respects. But um, through YMCA, we've been able to donate. So we have a monthly donation. Look, it just goes automatically. It's like having a direct debit. But all the staff know that we're putting straight into a, a really worthy course, that we, which is great. We've been able to, therefore, to... Also, you, you gave the example of the um, function tables, We've taken seats, we've taken tables at, at YMCA events uh, over recent years, obviously pre-COVID. Um, the other thing sometimes is, is that you see a stuff come up on BBX, but it's in bundles. We're getting rid of this. And you think, well, I quite like that, but actually I don't want all of that stuff. Um, but through YMCA, we've been able to go, do you know what, we'll have it. And then we'll split the stuff that we actually want. And the, the remainder, YMCA can then sell in their shop for, for cash. Yep, um, yep. So that's been a, a, a really good way that both sides of us can use um, the BBX um, to, to, to support the charity. Brilliant. So yeah. Yeah. That, that's been our experience of, uh, of how BBX works for, for our corporate responsibility. <coughs> Thank you, Nigel. That's uh, that's brilliant. So uh, it it also reminds me that uh, people that are looking for stock for a charity shop, if a charity has a has a shop somewhere, that b- buying a bundle of product on BBX and then donating it straight to the charity to put in their charity mm. shop is a great uh, way. The charity can put it through their books as a normal donation, and there's there's no interference because some charities, uh, their FDs, uh, sometimes uh, get in the road of uh, of uh, progress as I can see a few people nodding their heads and so that's a great way of <coughs> avoiding to have to have the FD involved. Da- I know Peter you uh, want to yeah. contribute something more but just before that uh, right. Daniel okay. Daniel Hillier you uh, you're also involved in uh, from the other side of the fence as a customer uh, can you just unmute Daniel and just uh, share with some of the experience that you've had. 
Yeah, of course. Um, we run a, a website design agency, mainly working in the uh, public sector. So we've got 700 town and parish council clients. And the reason we joined BBA is because we wanted to build our business profile. And without business clients, it can be hard to build a business profile. So in terms of, uh, we found BBX really useful for kind of developing that side of our business. And then it always is the question of how do you spend it? Apart from being money and you can spend it anywhere within the network, it always amazes me when people say they can't spend it because you could buy loads of stuff with it. So what we've done is we, we support a charity out in India that helps uh, young people in the slums. And we did a charity auction evening in um, Exeter and we use some of our BBX to buy auction prizes so then you can then auction them off that way as well as like uh, Nigel uh, donating regularly to the um, YMCA. It Thank is. you Daniel that's uh, that's another aspect it's nice just to hear the practical uh, applications. Peter you had something to add? Yeah, sorry I was just going to pick up something that Nigel said quite early in you know, quite early on, and that was, as Daniel's just said, this whole element of regular donations, because at, yeah, at the moment we've experienced one-offs which have been really, really helpful for what we've wanted to do, but as a charity, if you want to plan things ahead, then what is really great is to actually have someone or some people or some businesses actually making a commitment to give you so much per month, whether that's five five BBX pounds or 10 or more, it doesn't matter. You know what's coming in and you can then plan more carefully what you want to do rather than doing it and then hoping for donations. So I think it's a very important part of what BBX actually has to offer and perhaps should be um, encouraging, recommending or, or whatever. Yep. Uh, thank you, Peter. And uh, it's a seamless process. We call it automatic debit authorities and you just agree to donate £100 a month or whatever the number is, and then month on month, it, uh, the system just uh, uh, takes the £100 out of your BBX account and puts it into your nominated charity. So, uh, Andrew, you uh, had something to add? Yeah, it was, it's actually, um, I'm actually making um, a thing that I would like help with. <laughs> so I'm going to Westminster Abbey on the 27th of September to pick up my award from the Queen. Um, the next day we're actually holding an event where we're actually going to be doing a raffle so far not within bbx i've actually got 50 businesses that have given us um, raffle prizes so if anyone can support if anyone can help it's it, it would be amazing it really would i'm trying to level up um what we can do with the donations but also we're going to have the local radio and the press involved as well yeah um, so <laughs> if anyone out there can help please please I'm asking you very nicely. <laughs> yeah, we can. I'm sure we can. Uh, we can help in that regard. So there's just. What well, I think the message is that overall. What we're trying to get at is that there's more than one way to attack a problem, and you know if you look outside the box, uh, there's all ways that we as business owners can can capture and monetize some otherwise wasting spare capacity. The benefit to us is that we get a new customer in that process. And then if we can help a charity out in the, in the meantime, that uh, it's a win-win for every single person. So unless there's any other questions or any other input or anybody else that would like to uh, contribute anything at the moment, last chance. I'm, I'm going to be the just play one, option here. One quick thing, John. I just want to um, say Daniel and Nigel both kindly support the YMCA in Exeter and just give everyone an update. They're just now getting putting in plans to get all their carpets cleaned in the houses that they have for their residents and we're also getting them a new office table and chairs for their office that they're using their bbx to spend so that's all partially thanks to nigel and daniel and their donations and everything else that's donated yep so I think yeah, Tom, yeah. Tom, just we do have a worthy cause in Essex as well, a charity called Safe Steps for uh, Battered Partners and everything else. OK, and I think uh, in total, we've got something like 60 charities that are already part of the BBX uh, community <coughs> so, and and we can help more. That's that's the whole thing, because, you know, we can find that 20 grand down the back of every business sofa that they didn't know they had. And let, let's put it to some decent uh, to decent causes. And. Uh, I'm w w mindful of time. We've got our 45 minutes up today. Was there anybody else that wanted to contribute anything at all? No? 
Okay. Well, it's wonderful being having you all on the call today. We're going to share this recording with any charity that wants. Uh, if you're getting together at a charity convention or you find other people in the space that we can help, it's not a matter of uh, trying to just to find a certain few. We can help many more charities other than what we're currently doing. If you know of any business that would like to help charity, even they don't have to become part of BBX, but they, you know, if they can donate a thousand pounds worth of widgets, then, uh, then that's great. And that could be time or it could be a product or something that's sitting around in a garage or in a storage shed costing money. Um, there's many, many ways that we can help and it all goes to uh, great causes. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been uh, my pleasure to host you on the call today. I hope you've learned something, whether it's running a charity or the ability to, uh, to uh, help a charity and uh, enjoy the rest of your lunch. And uh, thank you for your participation.